Jamie spends time in a floating cell as Claire becomes a hostage in this week's Outlander. While doing her best to save the lives of so many sailors from typhoid, Claire learns that her journey will not end well. Plans to arrest Jamie and Jamaica have been put in motion, prompting her to take action with an unlikely ally. Meanwhile, Jamie gets himself arrested aboard his ship leaving Fergus and Mars Ali to make some tough decisions. Outlander resumed where last week ended with both Jamie and Claire both being separated again. While boarding a Navy ship that has come to disease, Claire is basically taken hostage after the captain realizes that she is more valuable on board than off. He promises to return Claire to Jamie safely as they are both heading for Jamaica. Jamie is beside himself and takes his frustration out on the captain of his own ship. A stand ensues between Jamie's allies and the captain's men. Jamie orders his men to stand down and doing so is promptly arrested by the sergeant at arms. The source of the disease Claire is also not overly keen on the captain's decision but makes to by tending to the sick. The first task at hand is to scrub everything down and ensure that no one is touching each other. Typhoid can easily spread even by just touching one another. Grog is being used to sanitize their hands and stop the spread of infection. It's not as good as pure alcohol but it will do. The men are not very happy about this usage of their grog but thank you Mr. Pound comes up with the idea of using some men to distill the grog to pure alcohol. This keeps both the men and Claire happy as it is more effective as a disinfectant and the men get more of the grog for themselves to drink. Jamie looks to Fergus to get him out of his cell. He begs and pleads with him to pickpocket the keys. Fergus is unsure as he doubts that they could take over the ship with only seven men. But Jamie does not care. He wants out and wants to get to Claire. He pressures Fergus even more and even attempts to guilt trip him by saying that he clearly does not understand love at all, for if he did he would move heaven and earth. Fergus leaves Jamie unsure of what to do. Claire's efforts to try and save the sick seem to not be going well. More men are getting sick and more men are dying. She looks to find the root cause which leads her to a gentleman in the kitchen. The source of the disease is serving the men their dinner. He is quickly guaranteed in an effort to stop the spreading. But after several more days, things have not slowed down. A burial at sea takes place of eleven men. Its toll is clearly affecting the others and it is unclear if Claire will be blamed for not doing enough. As Claire ponders her thoughts on what to do, another man has fallen ill. It's the husband of Mistress Johansson, the lady who tends to the goats. However, his sickness is a bit different. He does not have typhoid, but alcohol poisoning. The damn fool has decided to drink the pure alcohol that Claire has been distilling. Claire tends to him and informs Mistress Johansson that he will be fine. As she goes to leave she discovers a Portuguese flag in the background the same as the one as they ship. That young Yin was taken hostage on. Claire investigates this further by checking the captain's logbook. A note of the vessel is marked but it is not the same one. Young Yin is still out there somewhere. Claire, however, does find an even darker log entry. The captain has marked that Jamie was spotted on the ship and that he will be arrested when they come ashore. Claire realizes now that when they land in Jamaica she will be used as a hostage and Jamie will be arrested. My goats need grass Fergus returns to Jamie and informs him he has not stolen the keys. He will not do what Jamie has asked and that it is out of love for both him and Mars Ali that he has not done this. For if they are not successful then a worse fate for them lies ahead. And even if they do succeed what would happen when they land? Claire is unsure what to do now. She must warn Jamie but how? The sick are finally getting better, with fewer dying. The worst has passed and now Claire must find a way to escape. She confides in Mrs. Johansson her troubles and Johansson has the answer. My goats need grass. When land is spotted Claire and Mrs. Johansson go ashore to feed the goats. Claire takes the opportunity to escape. She flees her captives and intends to find a ship and warn Jamie. But she does not get far. The captain and some marines stumble across her while doing the rounds. Claire pleads that the captain does not do what he intends but he cannot. He has the marines escort Claire back to the ship. The Artemis captain comes to visit Jamie and informs him he will be released as he needs every good hand to navigate the waters. Jamie, apprehensive and sarcastic, mocks him but Marsali speaks up. 
She and Fergus have struck a deal and told the captain that if Jamie gives his word he will not break it. Jamie finally realizes that Fergus did have his best intention for him. He did not abandon Jamie but helped him, just in another way. Jamie has a moment with the two of them and decides that he has been wrong all along with them. He gives his blessing for Fergus and Mars Ali to marry. Claire is back on board but Mrs. Johansson is having none of it. She wants to see Claire escape to warn Jamie. She helps Claire once more by jumping overboard with a raft. They are still close enough to the shore where Claire can get and find a ship to sail to Jamie and warn him about the people waiting for him in Jamaica. Claire cries out, Jesus H. Roosevelt Christ, and jumps into the sea to save Jamie. What did you think of this week's Outlander? What was your favorite moment? Leave a comment below to let us know your thoughts. Outlander returns Sunday, November 26th at 87C. On Stars.